In this video, I'm going to show you how to make seamless patterns and textures in Photoshop. I was recently working on a project in Adobe Dimension. Adobe Dimension is a 3D compositing tool, and I needed to create a seamless pattern for an object that I was working on. After I made the pattern, I thought that it would be a good tutorial. Okay, let's get started. This is the document that I'm going to work with, and as you can see, it's a cardboard texture. And to create a pattern, all you need to do is go into edit and select the find pattern and you can give your pattern a name. I'll just call this pattern test because we're testing it out and I'll press OK. Then I'm going to create a new document where we're going to be trying out our patterns and I'll just fill the screen by double clicking on the hand tool and selecting the pattern fill layer and you can see the pattern there. And the reason that it looks seamless now is because it's actually quite a large file, so it's filling up the entire screen. But if I change the scale back to something small, like 25%, you can see that there is, in fact, a noticeable seam in this pattern. So the goal for this tutorial is to create a seamless pattern, and we're going to take a look at several techniques to achieve that goal. So I'm just going to press OK, and we'll leave this file here for now, and I'm going to go back into the seamless pattern document that we're going to work with. One of the most useful tools for creating seamless patterns is the offset filter. If you go into filter, other, offset, you can create an offset of your image. By default, everything is set to zero, but if I start increasing the horizontal offset, you can see how I'm now pushing the image to the edge and the pixels get wrapped around on the other side. So we can see the seam right here. It's going to be more noticeable in the vertical axis. Watch what happens with the vertical axis. See that? See how the pixels are wrapping from the bottom to the top? And we can now see the seam. So it's a very, very strong seam as you can see. Now, this area, the area on top and the area on the bottom are going to be seamless, obviously, because the pixels are just pushing over to the other side. So there will not be a seam on the top and the bottom, and we just have to worry about the center. So I'll press OK. The first step is to remove the seam, of course. So I'm going to select the clone stamp tool and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to hold alt option on the Mac and sample from an area to clone from. I'm just going to click on this spot here and you can see the preview there and notice that I have a very soft brush and actually, you know what? The brush is not as soft as I like it to be. So I'm just going to set it to zero just to create a very, very soft brush and I'll select a sample source again. I'll just click here and I can start painting from this area to try to remove that seam. So I'm just going to try to remove it like so. So that's before and after. In your image, just look for seams, repeating elements, anything that will create problems with creating a seamless texture. It might take you some trial and error, and that's OK. The image is still very, very dark on top. And also notice that the pixels are slightly saturated in a different color. So we're going to fix all of that with a couple adjustment layers. First, I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to make the image brighter by creating a new point and dragging up. And it's going to brighten out the image, obviously. If your image has really strong shadows or highlights, this is what you're going to want to do to even them out. What I'm going to do now is click on the layer mask. And in the properties panel, I can click on invert to make this white layer mask into a black layer mask, which will hide everything in that layer. What I'm going to do now is click on the brush tool and I'm going to paint with white to reveal that effect. But I want my opacity to be low. So maybe something like 60 percent. And I'll also increase the flow to about 80 percent. That way, when I paint, I don't paint 100% white and I can just build on that effect. Also, to make things easier to see, I'm going to create a black and white adjustment layer. That way, I'm just focusing on the luminance values of the image when I'm painting and the color doesn't become distracting. So you can see now how I'm just brightening up these areas to try to make them match. And I'm just building on that effect, like so, before and after. If your adjustment is too bright or too dark, you can continue adjusting the curves adjustment layer to try to match the luminosity. So I think that the image needed just a little bit of an adjustment. See how now we're matching the luminosity a lot better? I'm going to disable the black and white adjustment layer, and I'm going to remove other things from the image that I think might not work. For example, there is a really strong shadow there, so I'm just going to hide it by 
selecting the clone stamp tool and cloning from these pixels here and I'm just going to remove that. Now that I've removed that, I'm going to remove a few other things that I think are going to be noticeable in a seamless pattern like this area here. So I'm just going to sample from the area above and click and drag to clone that out. And maybe this really dark spot here, I'll just remove that as well. So I'm just removing things that are going to make it super obvious that it's a pattern. So I think this looks pretty good. Now we have one other problem. The problem is that the color on top is not matching the color on the bottom and there's a lot of shifting going on with saturation and the hue. So what we're going to do is select a hue and the saturation that are going to apply to the entire image. And the easiest way to do that is by simply selecting the eyedropper tool. And then from this drop down, you can select at the very least five by five average, maybe even 11 by 11 average on a document that is pretty large like this one. And what you want to do is just click on the color that you would want your cardboard box to be or whatever your pattern is. So I can click on maybe this shade here. And what the 11 by 11 average is doing is selecting an average color out of a pixel grid of 11 by 11. So if I zoom in, you're going to see the pixel grid. Each individual square is a pixel. And when I click with the eyedropper tool, I don't necessarily select this pixel. I select an average of 11 by 11 pixels. So imagine just a square that's 11 pixels by 11 pixels and everything in that square gets averaged out to a single color. And I think that for something like this, it works much better because as you can see, there's a lot of colors going on in there. So you might accidentally click on a color that you don't necessarily want. So averaging the colors will be a much, much better solution in this case. I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. I have this color selected as the foreground color, which is what I want. And I'm going to create a solid color fill layer that is going to apply that color and I can just press OK. Now, the original image will control luminosity. We only want to change hue and saturation. If I open up the foreground color picker, you'll notice that every color is made out up of a hue, saturation, and brightness. Brightness will be controlled by the original layer. Saturation and hue will be controlled by the new layer. In case you don't know what hue is, it's simply the color. What color is it? And saturation is how intense that color is. And obviously brightness is how bright it is. So I have my color here and I want to apply the hue and the saturation. To do that, I can use a blending mode. If you don't know what blending modes are or how they work, I highly recommend my crash course on blending modes. I'll place a link right below in the description so that you can check it out. But blending modes are just these algorithms that allow you to blend layers together. And down here, we have the blending modes that control the components, the hue, saturation, and luminosity. So we want to apply hue and saturation at the same time. And to do that, we simply select color. So once I select color, I have a hue and saturation of this beige color applied to the entire document. So that's before and after. See that? See how it evens out the colors in the image? At this point, all we need to do is create a test and see if we did a good job creating the seamless pattern. To do a test, you can press Control Alt Shift E, Command Option Shift E on the Mac to create a new layer based on all the active layers. Then I can go into Filter, Offset, and see if there is a noticeable seam. And I don't think I see one. I can try that again. Filter offset. And it looks like we did a pretty good job. I'll enable the black and white adjustment layer just to see if there's any problems with tone. I don't see one. So we can define the pattern again. Now, the pattern may not be perfect. We may need to come back and adjust it. But at this point, it's just simply fine tuning those small issues that may come up. So I can go into edit define pattern and I can just call it test number two. I'm still not sure if this is going to be my final pattern and I'll press OK. I'll go back into this document where we're testing our patterns and I can do the same thing. Create a pattern. Photoshop will automatically select the previously created pattern and I can change the scale to 25 and you can see that we massively improved on that pattern. Now it's not perfect as I said. We just got to go back and figure out where the shadows are that we need to fix for this pattern. 
So look for clues in your pattern. For example, this white dot, um, wherever this white dot is, this white line, that means that that area is too dark and we need to fix that. So let's find it. If I come back in here, um, it looks like it's in this spot here. If I enable the black and white adjustment layer, you'll see that here. It's a little difficult to see, so I'm just going to do one more filter offset just so that it gets placed in another area. And I think I made it worse. It went down here. Let me try that one more time. And this spot, which is very close to where we had it before, is where it's most noticeable. So I can either work on this new layer or on the original layer. So I think I'll work on the original layer. This area, once again, is too dark. We go back into the fill pattern. You'll notice that there's this dark, dark line. So we can work with that. So what I'll do is I'll simply go back into the curves adjustment layer, which is brightening up everything. And I can try to paint with white in that area to see if I can brighten those pixels up. If I can't, because a lot of those pixels are coming from here, maybe I could create another levels adjustment layer and adjust it accordingly. So maybe brighten it up just a little bit, click on the layer mask, click on invert, and then just paint on those areas to try to brighten those pixels up before and after and I can adjust the opacity accordingly and see if that works. Maybe that's, I feel like that might be a little too bright. So it's just a matter of fine tuning it. So once you do that, you can just disable the black and white adjustment layer and then click on the topmost layer and press Control Alt Shift E, Command Option Shift E on the Mac and try again. I'm gonna go into edit, define pattern, I'll call it test number three, press OK. And in my test document, I'm going to create one more pattern overlay. Once again, Photoshop selects the previously created pattern and I can set it to 25. And you can see that I definitely improved on that, but I didn't quite fix the problem entirely. So I'll go back one more time and I'll try to fix it this time. I'm just going to work on the layer that we just created and I'm going to go into filter, other, offset, and I'm just going to see if I can find the seam here. And before I do that, actually, I'm just going to set the black and white adjustment layer so that the color goes away and it's easier for me to see the problem. So filter, other, offset, and I can maybe find it. And I think this is the area here. See that? See how that's much darker? So I can just push that up so that it's easier for me to see and work with it. So I'll press OK. I'll create a new curves adjustment layer. I'll make it brighter. And I'll click on the layer mask, click on invert, and I'll just paint, try to paint that away. And that might be way, way too much, but that's okay. And I'm going to go back into this document just to sort of see where the problem is. So I'm just painting in the areas that I think are too dark. Obviously now it's too bright, but I can always adjust it from the properties panel and just brighten it up again so that it's not really a problem. So I can disable the black and white adjustment layer and see the before and the after. And I think it still might be a little too bright. So I'm just going to just darken it up just a tad. And you can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge that point if you want to, before and after. And what I'll do now is once again, Control Alt Shift E, Command Option Shift E on the Mac, go into Edit, Define Pattern, and I'll call it Test Number Four. Press OK. And if I try it one more time, I think we'll be really, really close. So you can see how we started with that and we kept working and fine tuning the image until we got something that is very, very close to seamless. I'm actually very happy for this result. I know that for my purposes, this will work. I can take this file into Adobe Dimension and apply it to a 3D object. Then once you render the 3D object, it will look very realistic. This is my final render. As you can see, the cardboard box looks great. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again in the next tutorial.